I think that'll work. So let's talk about speed ramping. In this video, that's exactly what I'm gonna cover. What is it? How do you do it in DaVinci Resolve? Okay, cause yeah. But first, we're gonna need something to speed ramp. I think that'll work. My name's Ray, I help out creative entrepreneurs. So welcome to my channel. If you're not subscribed already, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. And now let's get into this. Yeah. So the whole reason why I decided to make a video on speed ramping and how to accomplish it in DaVinci Resolve is because a couple of weeks ago, somebody had asked a question in the comments of one of my videos. How do you do that effect where it starts off in slow motion effect? And how do you, I, I can't read. So Slums Family Productions asked, how do you do that effect where it starts off in a slow motion effect, then speeds up, then slow motion again to end it? I love it. This is actually one of my favorite effects. And when I first saw this effect, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So I would love to show you how that's actually done in this video, which is exactly what we're about to do. Hold on. Make sure that you stick around until the end because I'm gonna show you some pretty awesome stuff. And if at any point during this video, you feel compelled to hit that like button, go ahead. So now that we got the ball rolling, all right, enough wasting time, let's do this. First thing we're gonna do is to select our clip and make sure we turn on Retime Controls. So what you can do is right click and then select Retime Controls. Another thing you can do is push Control R. What this is gonna do is attach the speed controls to the clip itself. You're gonna see a line here with a bunch of triangles. You're gonna see a down arrow with 100%. With this clip as it is, we can just change the speed, but that's not going to be doing the speed ramping that we want to be able to do. There's a couple of different ways to do that as well. So one of the ways is clicking on the down arrow, going to change speed and selecting one of the presets. So you can slow it down all the way to 10% or you can speed it up up to 800%. You can also do this manually. So if you go over to the upper right side, you're going to turn your cursor into this double arrow icon. You can drag it to the right to slow it down, or you can drag it to the left to speed it up. And if we speed it up and we play it, you're gonna notice that, hey, it flies really fast. Now, what I wanna do is find the best location to set our first speed point. And I think right here actually is the perfect spot. So we're gonna put add speed point. We're gonna add a second one towards the end, probably about right here. All right, moving this over a little bit, you have two handles on here. The first handle at the top, if you drag it to the right, the left, this is going to change your speed similar to what we did before. So if you drag it to the right, it slows it down. If you drag it to the left, it speeds it up. If you select the bottom handle and you drag it left or right, you're going to affect where that speed point is physically on the clip. I'm gonna leave it right there. So what we're gonna do is just play this through real quick so you can see the effect that it has. So you can see that it sped up this particular moment in time. So what I'm gonna do is drag this handle to the right. We're gonna slow this down to about 65%. Let's see how that works. Okay, so it definitely slowed it down a bit, but you noticed how jittery it is. What is happening is this footage was recorded at 24 frames per second. DaVinci Resolve is filling in the empty frames with duplicates. So that's why you're getting double frames in here and it's just causing it to jump. The way to work around this is to add optical flow. So what we're doing is selecting the clip. We're gonna go over to the inspector here and drag it down to retime and scaling. Let's close everything else first. So retime and scaling, you're gonna see retime process and you're going to see motion estimation. What we're gonna deal with first is the retime process. So you're gonna click on it and drag it down to optical flow. It's at this point that I would highly encourage you to enable caching if you don't have it enabled already. In order to do that, you'll go up to playback, go to render cache and then select either smart or user. Okay, so we're gonna play this through real quick. Very first thing that you're gonna notice is that it looks like I'm at a rave with this strobe light. And unfortunately, it's because when you do optical flow, even though this spent time recaching everything, because there are effects on here and we applied optical flow, we have to actually delete the cache so that way it can recache entirely from the beginning. Yes, it's an extra step, it's annoying, but it is what it is. So make sure clip selected, 
go down to delete render cache, and then go to select clips. Delete, let's let it cache real quick, and then we'll play through. Now ideally, you would want to do this before you do any coloring. In this example though, I decided to do coloring ahead of time, which is 100% my fault. All right, so we're just gonna play this through real quick. And I'd say that it looks pretty good. Now, there's gonna be one more thing that we can do with this, and that's to play with the control curves. Right click, and then click on retime curve. When you do this, you're gonna see a line going across with a couple of points. Go to the drop down, select retime speed, and then when we tap on each one of these, we're gonna click this curve button. When you click on the curve button, it's going to give you some handles and it's gonna smooth it out a bit more. And what you can do with this is you can drag the handles in to speed up the transition or you can drag it out to slow it down. We're gonna ignore the, the cache there for a second. I know it's kind of trippy, but let's say we want to speed this up. Speed that part up. Playback, delete render cache, select a clip, delete. What you can do with this is play around with the handles. You might find that speeding up the jump into the speed difference makes it look better, or you could just want to ease into it. So you have your choice with these handles. I think what I'm going to do is increase the speed for this last bit up until this point here. So we'll add another speed point and then increase this. I'm going to drop this down to 200. And again, I'm going to smooth it out a little bit. Something like that. Okay, so we're just going to play this back real quick. So this looks good. What I want to do is move this to speed point a little bit further this way. So I'm gonna put it here. So we're gonna drop this to about 350. So you have a slow transition into the speed right here and then it ramps up really quickly and then it goes back to normal speed. Here's another really cool trick that you can do. You see this 300% right here? Let's drag this to the right to increase our resolution right here. Drag it up just like that. Or you can drag it down if you wanna slow it down. I like it where it's at. Okay, so let's talk about Speed Warp, which is a feature available only in the DaVinci Resolve Studio version. It's not available in the free version. What happens if Optical Flow introduces some artifacting, or what if I slow it down and Optical Flow just isn't enough? Well, in this case, this is where Speed Warp is going to become important. For this example, I'm going to slow this down to about 40%. So if we play this back, It's not as noticeable, but you're gonna see there's some parts in it where it just jumps. And it's not as smooth as it could be. So to fix that, what we do is go over to motion estimation, drag down from project settings to speed warp, and wait for it to cache. Speed warp is a very processor intensive process. One thing that I want to do while I'm at it is just speed up this easing a little bit. I'll just play this through real quick. Now, let's watch it in full screen. I think that'll work. So there are a couple of tips that I want to offer you when you're doing this. Number one, don't distract. It's not an effect that you wanna constantly overuse. You know how there are some transitions that people use in their videos where every time they change a scene, there's a complete transition and it's just like, it's super distracting from the message that you're trying to give. Number two, make sure that you have caching enabled. Easiest way to do that is just to go up here, go to playback, go to render cache, and I always go to smart. You can do user, it really depends on your preferences, really, but typically I keep it on smart rendering just because. Which brings me to number three. And this one's really one of the more important parts. If you have any effects applied to your clip, when you apply optical flow to it, after you apply optical flow to it, even though you're gonna see the blue bar right here turn red and it's gonna recache the entire clip, you're still gonna wanna select the clip, go up to playback and hit delete render cache for the selected clip. It does take a little bit of extra time to apply to it, but it's gonna be better overall. Number four, use render in place. Once you have the clip exactly how you want the clip, go ahead, click on it, right click, hit render in place, 
And if you don't know how to use render in place, then check out the video that I made for it. I'll also leave a link to that down in the description. So I really wanna know, is it something you knew about? Is it something that you're currently using? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. Smash that like button if you got value out of this video. Don't forget to share it with a friend if you think it'll help. Hit subscribe, cause I'm coming out with videos all the time. And until next time, I'll catch you later.